And welcome back. It has been a busy week or so here on the homestead. And unfortunately, almost everything I've done has been in that couple hour window I have in the morning before work, so I just don't have time to film it. So I'll show you what we've done so far, and we'll pick up on the tractor repairs where I'm at today. Hello, and welcome to our channel. We're, We're glad, glad you're here. here. Well, the first project I had to get done was install a goose ball in the back of the truck. And the reason we had to get that installed is this. We needed to get this monstrosity home. We found a really good deal on this old uh, fifth wheel hitch, but it has been converted to a goose ball. So we didn't put the fifth wheel in, obviously. And uh, it needs some work. It's pretty dirty. It hasn't been used in probably three or four years. So uh, that's our new little toy. Uh, we loved our other camper. It was a 24 foot uh, bumper pull. This one's a 32 foot, obviously fifth wheel and it's got way more storage and a lot more room in there. So I think we're going to be way more happy camping in this than we were with the other one. So uh, we might show a few videos of that as we work on it. We did clean it out yesterday inside, but like I said, the outside's just filthy. And it's got a few, few problems here and there that need addressed, but the price was good, so I think it was worth it. So let's go out to the garage and take a look at that tractor. Okay, there's actually a couple issues we're dealing with on the tractor. Uh, it started with the backhoe attachment. We brought it in uh, last weekend and uh, replaced a couple of bad hydraulic hoses on it and the pins were all frozen up on the bucket. We had to work on that. So when we actually use the backhoe attachment, we'll, we'll kind of go over with you what we did on those. But when we did that, we lost a lot of hydraulic fluid because of the leak. So I figured now would be a good time to replace the hydraulic filters and the hydraulic fluid. So I took the side cover off the engine here Put the hood up to change the uh, hydrostatic filter and I noticed right down here on the frame that it was cracked in half. Um, I did go to the New Holland dealer. This frame is no longer available so I had no choice but to weld it. So I'll bring you in and show you that here in a minute. And also um, I'll show you here on the back of this tire the wheel on this uh, left front was leaking um, fluid. So I delved into that, and there was also one other issue. So when I bring you in here, I'll, I'll explain this to you a little bit better. We'll start with the, with the cracked frame. Well, I hope you can make this out since it's already been repaired. But the crack went right down through here. Uh, this bracket here is welded onto this frame piece. The back of the steering and uh, front drive axle bolts here. And then there's like a stiffener plate that's attached here. Uh, it's also welded to that plate and it cracked right down the weld line between these two plates. So what I did was took my grinder and I ground like 45 degree angles in there as deep as I could get and then just filled it back and forth with uh, uh, MIG weld. Uh, I started basically, I this bolt was still in to keep everything in position. I ground out this top section, welded this top section to hold it in position then took this bolt out and ground down in here and then welded down there and also tried to bring the weld out to catch the top of this plate a little bit to help strengthen it. And then I took my grinder and ground the excess weld off to flatten these two holes back out. Now this top hole, the bolt was broken off. That's the bolt that goes in there, that's the bottom bolt. And that's the bolt that was in the top hole. So I think you can see there's a bit of a length difference there. So, well, I guess I'm going to have to wait to finish uh, showing you the tractor issues because the chickens have decided that these hay bales in the uh, barn is where they want to lay their eggs now. So they're laying the legs up on the top, and uh, I think what I'm just laying, she's proud of herself. So we'll have to wait till they're done squawking before I can finish with the tractor. Okay, I think she's finally done squawking. What I ended up doing with this broken bolt was uh, drilling it out a couple different sizes, tried some different easy outs on it, and just did not want, did not want to budge. <clears throat> so I ended up taking my torch and sticking my torch in there to heat the what was left of it up, and I finally did get it out. Almost looks like there may have been uh, some Loctite or something on there, which I had to heat up to, to get it to come out. But there's the bro broken section of bolt. I've already been down to the hardware store and bought a new bolt. So we can, we can tighten these two bolts up and then the framework is done. 
And then of course the other problem I mentioned was this uh, front wheel. So let me show you what's going on with that. Okay, there's the back of the wheel. You can see how oily it is. Uh, I happened to see this laying on the other side of the tractor working on something else. I looked underneath and saw that this wheel was all oily. So uh, I knew we knew we had to do something on it. So let me show you where we're at on the, uh, the actual end of the axle there. Okay, here we are at the end of the axle. Um, this top section here is what actually does the steering and it supports the top. Now this is an exaggerated view but this is kind of how it was on the tractor. It was sitting at an angle. You can sort of see where it's been rubbing here. And we noticed driving that the other side is sitting nice and straight, obviously down tight. But it was nice and straight and this one was tipped in like that. So we knew something was, there was an issue here and there was also a leak. So when I tore this apart, what I found on the top here, that's my bearing. It was completely shot. There was maybe four or five balls left in there. That's the only one I can still find. I think I swept the other ones up. And I think you can probably see here in this, this top kingpin, this groove and this groove were actually caused by these balls down in here scraping. So we've tore all this apart, um, replaced the seal that goes inside of here. And there's also a, a roller bearing down in here that supports the weight. Those have already been replaced and this piece has been popped back on. So we can uh, put our new bearing inside of this housing and uh, drive that on the top. And then my leak, this is the hub end that uh, the wheel bolts to. There's half the seal is on this piece and half the seal is on this piece which is what bolts here on the face. On the back side of the support piece is this bearing. Well this is my new bearing because there's my old bearing. The uh, cage is completely gone on this bearing so it was not not keeping the uh, axle centered which allowed that you know the axle was sitting in here tipped which wore this bear, uh, seal out which was causing the leak so we've got the new seals in it we've got all the new bearings we'll go ahead and stick this back together and uh, put some fluid in it okay while well, I was waiting for the last batch of chickens to stop squawking I went ahead and tightened up the two bolts on the frame and uh, tapped the new new bearing into this uh, steering arm so this just sits on the top there. There's two dowel pins that line up here on the top of the uh, I guess the steering knuckle. This just taps down on here. The tie rod end has to line up and go in. We put our castle nut back on the tie rod. Put our bolts Back in the top of this, and just tighten these up. I'm sure you'll be able to see that just draw right down in there. Now this is sitting nice and flat like it was on the other side. I could also grab it and go like this with it and it would, it had movement, which it doesn't now. It's nice and tight. Once we tighten down the tie rod end, that movement will be gone. And we can take this shaft. There is a, a gear similar to this one with a bearing. It sits up here in the top of this unit. There's a gear on the end of the uh, axle that sits this direction. So you've got your axle gear here, this top gear up here. Now we'll have this bottom gear down here. Tap that bearing up in.
then what will happen is the, as the axle gear spins, it will drive this top gear, and through that shaft, it will drive this bottom gear, and then that will mesh with the, uh, the gear on this, this front housing. So let me show you how we assemble this front housing. Okay, we start with our, our hub piece. Make sure there's no debris on this seal. This outer section just slides right down on there. Then we take our, our new bearing. Still can't believe how that was chewed up like that. Take our new bearing, sit it down in here. And I did need to uh, tap that in gently last time. change in pitch there when it was finally seated. So that's in. Then we have this little little split ring that goes in a groove right there. And we take our gear, and this is what will drive off the end of that axle. It drives on. You want to kind of pop it on. There's a groove inside the back of this gear that those those two split rings snap into. And that's what basically holds this shaft from driving out. Okay, then we put our inner bearing on. Now I just need to get some uh, some silicone to put around the uh, gasket surface here. And there's also a bottom plate that I need to put uh, some silicone on that goes underneath. So I'm going to grab the silicone and we'll show you putting that on. Okay, I always use Permatex Ultra Gray. I just put a light layer around the gasket surface on both of these. Now this bottom plate will just go up on there like that. You put the bolts and the nuts on it, which I forgot to bring over here. There we go. There's two bolts in the back and two nuts in the front. Take our, our gear housing. Slide that right in there. And replace our bolts around this. Still some, some blue silicone on there from last time. straight lined up. We'll get all these bolts started and then we'll get them tightened up. And I don't think I mentioned that when I popped this front cover off the first time, the uh, fluid that came out of here kind of reminds you of metallic paint. It just had that that glossy sheen in it of all the little metal shavings, those uh, uh, those cages off of that bearing from the inside, off of this bearing, those two cages were basically just strewn all throughout the inside of there. Some of it was ground up to just a just a metallic powder. Some of it was actually still little chunks. So it was in. It was in pretty bad shape in there. It's a good thing we got in here and fixed it when we did, because this could have been pretty expensive if, uh, if it could have gotten any worse. Not to, not to say it wasn't expensive to begin with, but it would have been a heck of a lot worse. So I'll, I'll tighten these bolts up around here. I'll tighten the bolts up on the bottom, 
finish tightening this uh, castle nut up on the tie rod end and put a cotter pin in it. Then when we come back, we'll pull this plug out of here and refill this with fluid and probably drain the other side and put fresh fluid over there as well. Okay, I've got these all back together. Uh, bolts are all tightened top and, and front and bottom. Let it sit for a little while for the uh, silicone to set up so it's not uh, too soft. Uh, up top up here is a fill hole. And down here on the bottom, I think you can see that nut there is a drain hole. So if you take this plug out, it drains and then you fill at the top. And they say this is uh, just like a rear end of a car. You just fill it up until it starts running out of here. So we'll start filling this up. Actually, we'll take almost all of this. And every fluid on this tractor, other than the engine oil, appears to be this hydraulic fluid that runs in the transmission. It calls for it in these wheel ends. It calls for it in the axle, obviously the transmission. Another squawky chicken over there. <laughs> Ever since the weather got nice, we started letting them free range again. It seems like they've moved in here to lay their eggs instead of in the coop. And that's uh, that's one big difference in this video. Hang on a minute. <laughs> that's doggone chickens. Anyway, what I was going to say was that's one big difference between this video and my, my last several videos. I'm in a sweatshirt and jeans. I'm not wearing my coveralls and my heavy coat and hat and all that. It's finally warmed up a little bit. It's probably, I'll bet you it's in the low 60s today. I think it's supposed to reach almost 70. Uh, as you can see, I pulled the funnel out and it was already full. It's, it's back draining. So when that stops draining, yeah, I'll move that around a little bit, make sure it's slinging the fluid and we'll stick our plug back in so it definitely didn't take as much as I thought it might we'll tighten this up then we'll move our drain pan around to the other side we'll drain the fluid out of the other side and uh, refill it with fresh fluid as well I'm thinking that the manual said this was like an every 600 hour service possibly and I'm not sure if it's ever been done before so we'll move this to the other side and get it taken care of okay we're well, on the other side I'm going to take the uh, fill plug out first so it's got uh, got a vent to drain we can see it's it's filled right up to the top and boy is it some nasty looking dark black fluid We'll pull our drain plug out. Ew, it's awful shiny as well. And I don't have any leaks on this side. So I'm not going to tear into this one. But uh, it's got some shininess to it too, but definitely not, not like the other side. So we'll let this drain and we'll put the drain plug back in it and refill it like we did the other side. I don't think I need to show you that again since you just saw it on the other side. Um, one other thing which, I don't know if I can turn the camera here and show you or not. Let's see here. Yeah, this, uh, this is the power steering reservoir and it's also a filter. This, uh, this whole canister spins off just like an oil filter would. This is also supposed to be changed every 600 hours and uh, it was actually leaking. So um, we thought we had an engine oil leak because the oil on the ground was just nasty dark black oil. And I kept checking my oil and it was never going down at all. And when I pulled this side cover off, I noticed that uh, the leak was up here in the front off of this power steering pump or uh, reservoir. So we changed this uh, this reservoir as well, put the new filter on it and refilled it. Um, it's another 600 hour service. I don't think it's ever been done. This tractor is just shy of 3,000 hours 
and it still had the sticker on the top that said power steering fluid, which the uh, replacement did not have. So I wouldn't doubt that this is, had never been changed before. Um, seems like a lot of the maintenance on this tractor had not been done like it should have been. So uh, just little little things here and there we're doing to try and uh, try and get it back into good operating condition and uh, last us as long as possible. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little tractor and camper and truck update. Uh, with any luck, I'll get this tractor out in the garden today with the tiller on it and uh, do a preliminary tilling of our garden. If I do, I'll, I'll film that as well. So thanks for coming along today. Please subscribe. We'd appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and you have a wonderful day.